Okay, so last time we got together, man, we were dealing with part 30, and that was with, uh, we were talking about prophecy, I believe, and then we went from prophecy, I took you back to 1 Corinthians 14, again, this is speaking to people, edification, exhortation, and for comfort. So, again, it's an hour. It's a time that we, we need to learn how to, to prophesy to people and encourage them. Because you don't know how, how well, we all do. I mean, someone come up to you and say something really nice and or, 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 or just, you know, exhorting you or whatever. And, and they don't even know you're going through something, and it just hits you. You ever been there? I mean, we've all been there. And it's like, wow, that was great. I needed to hear that. Well, that's the Holy Spirit, right? And so he wants us to do that. And we, so we talked about that. And then we went into diverse kinds of tongues. Did I do that yet? Yeah, I took you into there because that's where we, we led down. Diverse tongues. This is supernatural utterance in other languages which are not known to the speaker. Now, I was thinking today, I was meditating. I was like, I'm not aware of, of any incident in my Christian walk thus far that I have done it. And someone come up and say, hey, you spoke in my language. I've never had that happen. Has, uh, have we at some point, maybe, possible, I don't know. Uh, you know, you're in so many different ministries and, and conferences, and you're in, 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 in uh, different nations and stuff. So I think about my travels, but no one's ever come up and said, hey, that was in Swahili or what have you. Maybe you have. I know people that have, been in, uh, that have had that happen before, and they've spoken in s certain languages, and they don't speak that language. That's the Holy Ghost, isn't it? And, and I believe God can do that for you, and God can do that through you. So that's part of that gifting. Uh, again, it hasn't happened to me that I am aware of uh, at, at, at all. I have a hard time speaking English. Okay? So it's a supernatural utterance in other languages. So we went to Isaiah. That was, that was really fun, wasn't it? Isaiah chapter 28, and knowing that God was setting up prophetically what he was going to do through the church to the Gentiles. Remember that? In the day of Pentecost. And so I want to go there. I'm going to start in, this is going to be uh, part 31. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. And this is going to be, uh, if you will, confirmation to that. Then, I'll, then I'll, we'll just run around there. So we're, we're still talking about the, the, the different kinds or diverse kinds of tongues okay and so when the day of Pentecost had come they were all together in one place and uh, one place and, and it actually says in the King James in one accord that wasn't a Honda <laughs> Honda Accord uh, actually it was one of the first miracles of the of the new church they were together in unity okay you'll catch all these later <laughs> and they came to one place imagine that and then suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing violent wind so it was like it right that's all they could describe it as and it filled the whole house where they were sitting I've been in services before I've been in private times with God where I felt that mighty rushing wind I don't know if you have before or you've heard it it is very exciting it's very wild it's very uh, different to be in that and you know what it feels like okay it sounds like so next and there appeared to them tongues resembling fire. Now, I want you just to think about this for a minute, tongues resembling fire. So we're, we're, we're now in the 31. We're not even going to recap, but because Isaiah 28, you can go back. But these tongues of fire, I believe that when you pray in the Holy Ghost, there is an issue of Holy Ghost fire. It's very powerful. Because if you ever noticed this, you ever been in a prayer meeting where they start out, you know, maybe in English and... God, thank you so much for the rain, for the farmers. Thank you for the seed, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden, it, it changes to another notch, another level. You begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Next thing you know, the peeling, the, 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 the paint on the ceiling starting to peel off because there's so much fire going on. How many know what I'm talking about? Just like in Sunday mornings sometimes when, G, uh, when Jennifer's praying, you know, she start out in English, and then all of a sudden, you guys get wild. We all get wild. What's happening? The Holy Ghost is, is moving, and I believe there's stuff that's happening in the atmosphere, in the supernatural, especially when tongues are being released, that there's not a demon 50, 50 uh, miles from here. 
uh, and I mean that because even in the old time Pentecostal revivals, if you ever done any studies before, uh, there, there's there's old meetings where there's old you know old picket fence white picket fence church, and they're out there in, in the boondocks uh, having a revival. And next thing you know, the fire department shows up because there was fire coming out of the ceiling uh, with their, what was this Holy Ghost power. Y'all you you heard those stories before? And I don't know how that happens and what that means, but I just believe that. So that, that's something to think about when you're praying in the Holy Ghost. You're, you're, you're stirring up the Holy Ghost in fire. Jesus came to do what? He came to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and in fire, okay? So we believe in fire baptism which were being distributed among them, and they, see, distributed among them, so they did receive that, right? And they rested, and they rested, what rested? The tongues of fire on each of them. I, I think the tongues of fire still rests on you, as each person received the Holy Spirit. Powerful, isn't it? It's not just some babble. You are praying in the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled. Say all filled. All were filled, that is, Diffuse throughout their being. <laughs> That's a good definition. Man, don't you like when the Holy Ghost all through your being? From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Woo! With the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. With the first time you ever get baptized in the Holy Ghost, sometimes it feels like you're being electrocuted. It's just a beautiful feeling. Now, notice this. Different languages. Different languages. There's a reason, okay, that is defined this way. As the Spirit giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout and God-fearing men from every nation under heaven. So I've taught this before that when the day of Pentecost come, came, they, they were having a huge, huge celebration, if you will, at the temple. People from all over the known world were there. What a time for the Holy Ghost to show up. See, God loves when all the cameras are on, when all the action is going on. He loves to show up because he, he loves a crowd, and he's not afraid. He's not ashamed. He will show himself strong. That's why I'm looking forward to the end times. See, some people think that there's no outpouring or real revival in the last days. I do believe that. I do believe while the world is, is panicking and, 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 and the world is focusing on certain chaotic things, God will show up in the midst of that. You say, how can you prove that? Well, I can prove you with the two witnesses. The whole world sees what they do. How did they do that? You ever heard of a camera? You ever heard of satellite? There are other supernatural ways. I don't know what else God's going to do. He could throw their pictures up on the, on, the, on the ceiling of the world. I don't know what he's going to do on the sky. All I know is the whole world will know it to the point that they'll be glad when they die. Help me. The, the Bible actually says it'll be it almost be like Christmas. Everybody will send gifts to each other. Thank God these two who tormented us with the gospel and with signs and wonders and miracles are finally dead. But uh, three days later, come on, somebody. So God doesn't have a problem with that. So I believe that's going to happen. Now, there were Jews living in Jerusalem. Okay, next. And when this sound was heard, notice that in this, when this sound was heard, so it must have been a boom. It must have been a loud kaboom. Because here you are, think about it. Use your imagination for a second. Just don't read the Bible and be King James about it. It's an upper room. They're in Jerusalem. Think of a carnival, a festival. Think of thousands of people. Think of money changers. Think of JoJo selling hot dogs. You know what I mean? The Ferris wheel's going on, and everything's had the bands playing. All, all this different, Oktoberfest. Just think of those things of a lot of people, and then you hear, boom, or oh, whatever it was, right? Because they heard the sound, and a crowd gathered. That must have been earth-shaking. And they were bewildered because each one was hearing those in the upper room, speaking in his own language or dialect. What a trip. God was making an announcement to the world. I have arrived with the power of my spirit. My son has risen from the dead. He's seated at the right hand. He did a tag team with the Holy Ghost, and he's here on the earth now. 
The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead now dwells among you. Woo! Hallelujah. And everybody got a chance to hear it. Isn't that amazing? That tells me one thing, that the Bible and the gospel is not exclusive to any one race. Come on, one color is for everybody. And don't let anybody ever fool you and tell you anything different. Because I'll tell you, that gets me Popeye mad on all sides of it. All right, next, you want to talk about diversity. And they were completely astonished, saying, look, are not all these guys speaking? They're Galileans. I mean, that would be like, again, if I stood up here and all of a sudden I started speaking Swahili. It would blow the hair out of your sockets. You'd be like, do what? Is he? Right? Or, or, or something like that, or Mandarin, or whatever. Wow, that's amazing. But I love the wording. They were completely astonished. Look! Not are all the... They're, they're speaking... They're Galileans. Next. Then how is that each of us hears in his own language or native dialect. I don't get this. How is this possible? It's a sign and a wonder, isn't it? Among us there are Parthians and Medes and Elamites and people of the Mesopotamia, Jude, uh, Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia Minor and Livonia and Tekoa and Bowersville. <laughs> Where? Canaan? Uh, Pergia and Pamphylia and Egypt and the districts of Libya and the district of Columbia, <laughs> you get it, D.C., and Cyrene and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Gentiles, converts, uh, converts to Jerusalem, uh, Judaism. Wow, everybody was there. Everybody was in the house listening, and they heard their own language. That's a sign and a wonder and a miracle. There's a lot to preach and teach on this. But again, it shows you how awesome God is and how he wants everybody in the world to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and to hear the great message. Oh, let's go on some more. Some Cretans, some Arabs, some Iranians. We all hear them speaking in our native tongues about the mighty works of God. Listen, but listen, listen to the narrative about the mighty works of God. So they heard in their tongue but it was what? The mighty works of God. So somehow they were preaching in their languages. We don't really know what it was. We just said the mighty works of God. Could be, to me, the mighty works of God is that Jesus was crucified and he rose from the dead. That's the mighty works of God and the creative power of God and those different things. But isn't that amazing? All right, let's go. And they were beside themselves with amazement. Again, read, read the wording. They were beside themselves with amazement and were greatly perplexed, saying one to another, what could this mean? Now, I'm, I brought this back out because Isaiah 28 is prophesying to this day. Stammering lips. You want to be drunk? You want to be, you know, vomit on the table as priest? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the Galileans. I'm going to take these stinky fishermen. I'm going to take these people and that are considered like outcasts, and I'm going to give them the most epic moment in history besides the cross and the resurrection is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Boom! And he chose them. Isn't that beautiful? And that just shows you that God chose, chooses any of us and all of us can be used for his glory. I'm glad, man, because I don't know about you. I've been overlooked in all kinds of things in life, but not with God. Next. But others were laughing and joking and ridiculing them, saying, they're full of sweet wine and are drunk. How many of y'all have ever been drunk in the Holy Ghost? I have. I mean, you know, be intoxicated. I think every one of us has been involved in Pentecost. You just happen, you get a little tipsy, you know. Sometimes I have trouble standing, you know, and wobble a little bit and say, what was that in the carpet? <laughs> it was just the Holy Ghost, you know, get lightheaded or whatever. It's just the presence of God. And that's a beautiful thing, isn't it?
But to the outside, they look at, what's wrong with you, bro? You know, what's wrong with you, man? I'm, hey, I'm just, I'm just feeling good. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice. Oh, Peter, got to say something, don't he? If, if he ain't raising his voice, he's raising the sword. I'd rather him raise his voice. And address them, men of Judea, and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be explained to you. Listen closely. Yes, sir. And pay attention to what I have to say. Now, notice this. This is Peter, the one who denied Christ. He denied Christ, and now he's boldly standing up in front of everybody. What did that? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. I like this old saying. The baptism of the Holy Ghost would do for you what a phone booth did for Clark Kent. It'll turn you into a superman. You like that? Isn't that the truth? It will. It'll, it'll, it'll change you. Uh, I, you and I have both seen people that are just so timid outside of the things of God. And the man, they get baptized in the Holy Ghost and they're on fire. They're little firecrackers. These people are not drunk as you assume. Since it's only the third hour, it's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, they weren't drunk. They haven't even started drinking yet. Next verse. Uh, I, uh, I will say this. One scholar uh, in, in, one of our, in my Bible school, he used to say this. He, he'd come in dragging during class. He'd say, he'd say, you know, listen, I'm trying to get started up here. He says, just remember, the Holy Ghost doesn't do anything before 9 a.m. That was his excuse for being slow. <laughs> it's not true, but it was funny, huh? But this is the beginning of what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. So Joel prophesied it too. And it shall be in the last days. This is why I say the last days have been a long time now. Says God that I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, or shall see divinely prompted visions, and your old men shall dream prompt, divinely prompted dreams. That's a whole lot right there to teach. So that right there is, is you know, that's our rite of passage right there. So in my, these last days, we should be prophesying. We should have divine dreams and divine visions. Absolutely, by the Holy Ghost. And a church that doesn't have this moving in their church is, is not a church that's been fire baptized. It's a church that doesn't have the Lord dwelling in them and on their leadership. It's just the way it is. Come on. I mean, if that's what the Word said for the first church, that would be for the last day's church because he said that was the last days. So that's us. Amen. So we need to contend for that faith, and we need to contend for this is part of this, this gifting that we're talking about, is that we would learn how to prophesy. We would learn how to tap into visions and dreams and you only can do that through the gifting of the Holy Spirit that's why we're teaching this and it's imperative in the last days to have this alright even on my bond servants both men and women I will in those days pour out my spirit and they shall what? prophesy yeah notice that they shall and I will bring about wonders in the sky above and signs uh, attesting miracles called the eclipse and other things on the earth below, blood and fire and smoking vapor. He's getting more into the end times. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon into blood. We've had blood moons before. Before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And it shall be that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, invoking, adoring, and worshiping the Lord Jesus, shall be saved. Call upon that name, amen? Rescued spiritually. That's why we do it on Sunday, every service. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man accredited and pointed out, attested to you by God with the power to perform miracles and wonders and signs which God worked through him in you uh, in your very midst, just as yourselves know. Let's finish it here because he's going to preach. And, and I'm not, I don't want to go into that. This man, when handed over to the Roman authorities according to the predetermined decision and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross and put to death by the hands of lawless and godless men. So we'll stop right there. So the preaching really picked up, didn't it? 
notice the, the fire baptism brought in bold to the point in your face you're you know you can't escape what I'm fixing to tell you your sin put them on the cross so where you can tell that in modern day preachers that they're not baptized in the Holy Ghost or have refused to walk in the spirit their messages are watered down if that's the message of a first day church it's supposed to be part of the last day church then how come this church in, in the modern day uh, life is not preaching like we're supposed to there's something wrong there's a disconnect you're not connected to the Holy Ghost because with the Holy Ghost you can't help it you're compelled to tell people it's something about it it's something about his passion for lost souls okay so that's part of that core part so I wanted to bring that out there I know it was a little lengthy but but you begin to see the connection there with Isaiah chapter 28 so go to Mark chapter 16 Let's look at this real quick. Is this okay? We really could stop so many places and just preach all over that. But, uh, yeah, go to verse 16 because I can't do this whole, I'll be here all night for that. Who has believed in me and who has been baptized will be saved from the penalty of God's wrath and judgment. But he who has not believed will be condemned, right? Uh, King James says, damned. These signs will accompany those who have believed do you believe i believe and in my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak in what new tongues read it again for all my baptist friend lutheran people whoever who don't believe and don't pursue the baptism of the holy ghost these signs will accompany those who have believed do you believe i believe in my name the name of christ not your denomination in my name, the name of Jesus, they will cast out demons and they will speak in new tongues. So that is a gift, it's a promise, it's actually an, a mandate to receive it. Okay, let's go to the next verse because it's just really good. And they will pick up serpents. That's not talking about real serpents, it's talking about demon power. But if you did accidentally pick up a serpent like Paul did and it bites you, you're going to live but you don't go out and play with them. Somebody wave at me. I promise you, you will see none of them on Sunday. If you do, they'll be on my shoes or around my waist. And they shall drink anything deadly. It will not hurt them. That's not purposely. This takes out of context. People mess this up all the time. And they'll lay hands on the sick and they will get well. It's not a promise of God. Okay, so again, these are some of the truths that we need to look at. Now let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse 44. I want to give the word to you on this, all right? Just hearing definitions and experiences is good, but let's go to the word. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Yeah, I've seen those documentaries, those guys picking up them snakes, man, and I'm like, you're crazy. And then it bites them, and they're like, Ugh, and they die, and I'm like, okay, that's stupid. Yeah. All right, ready? While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who were listening to the message confirming God's acceptance of Gentiles. So again, we're seeing the Holy Spirit fall throughout the, the new church, right? All the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed. Notice amazed, astonished, freaked out, my translation, just wow what is this man because the gift of the holy spirit had been poured out even on the gentiles so that was even more amazing that here these you know stinky gentiles these uncircumcised gentiles you know these Livonians <laughs> or whatever that god was willing to pour it out on them i love it because it's inclusionism god includes us and these people who get elite about religiosity and you know you're not part of the club because you're the wrong color and you have the wrong car make and you're you know you you don't go to the country club oh i want to strangle them in love just just as much love as i can give them oh i can't stand it i have an allergic reaction to them all right next verse kind of like the politicians for they heard them talking in unknown tongues or languages look at that languages and exalting and magnifying and praising god there's a lot to learn here. 
So notice this. They heard them talk in unknown tongues or languages. I believe this was actually their prayer tongues. But watch this. And exalting and magnifying and praising God. What is the context here? The context is when you pray in tongues, you exalt and you magnify and you praise God. You do. You, you, you. We're going to get into this more and probably not going to have all the time tonight. When you're, you're, you're praying with English, you do the best you can. Lord, I, I love you. I exalt you. I bless you. You're awesome. You're everything I could ever want. You know? And then you kind of lose it, right? You know, what else do you tell them? You've counted every toe and every finger. And you're like, uh, yeah, you run out of words. You run out of passion. And I exalt you, exalt you, exalt you, exalt you. You know, then you might go into a song. Uh, you know, whatever. How, everybody has a different romance with God, a different, you know, time with him. But then there comes a time when you, you, you go from that transition and you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost or you worship in the Holy Ghost, you sing in the Holy Ghost, which means just in your, your tongue that God gave you at your baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and it just begins to magnify God and glorifies him. So there are diversities of tongues. There's times when you pray very rough, you know, whatever it is. You just pray real hard. And, I mean, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes when, when you know, something really rough's going on, uh, Jennifer will do it, I'll do it, you've done it before, you just walk the floor and pray in the Holy Ghost and pace back and forth and just let that rip, boy, I'll tell you right now, like a caged lion. And then there's other times you just, Lord, I worship you, and you're praying in the Spirit or whatever. Diversity is a tongues, okay? So there's no real patent way of doing it. You can't teach anybody this. It's just part of the relationship you have. Like I said, everybody's romance, everybody's relationship with God is different, okay? And not one is wrong and another's better because everything's individual, okay? Uh, you know, some, sometimes, just like in real relationships, sometimes you're a Casanova. Sometimes you're a Pop-Tart. Sometimes you're just a dud. Come, come help me now. So you just, you're just not on your A game. You're just like, yeah, I love you. Yeah, okay. Didn't I say that last week? Right? And then there's, you know, then there's candies and roses and whatever. All right. It's, it's, it's relational, okay? The main thing is you keep coming back. Somebody wave at me. You keep coming back. That's a relationship. That's powerful. For they heard them talking in unknown tongues, like exalting and magnifying God. So you know that's part of your language. Okay, so learn from this. When you read the Bible, pick these things out and say, okay, there's a connection. God connects the dots. Okay, that's what he wants you to do. Then Peter said, what did you say, Peter? He said... Can anyone refuse water for these people to be baptized since they've received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So, so notice this. This is going to mess up some religious people. Can anyone refuse water for these people to be baptized since they've received the Holy Spirit just as we did? You mean they got baptized in the Holy Ghost first? Yes. See, people argue, say, well, you gotta be you gotta be saved, you gotta get baptized in water, then you get get baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> no, you don't. You do it the way God does it. Okay? I mean, you know, you can't get baptized in concrete if there ain't no water. Take it. <laughs> Wait, that's blood. Uh, right? You 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 gotta go with the flow. But I like that because it messes up all the religious folks. I'll tell you this real quick story. I had come back from Africa. We had a lot of souls saved, uh, and I was working back on my secular job back when I would do, you know, everything, missions, and then I'd go work secular job. And uh, I was sharing with a brother, you know, about what the Lord had done. Man, I was pumped up. I was like, man, praise God. You know, all these people got saved. He's like, well, did they get baptized? Um, I said, no. I mean, we were in a place you couldn't get baptized. I mean, plus it wasn't my responsibility. I had to leave. Well, they weren't saved. Oh. The spirit of slap almost came on me. I was like, are you serious? I go that far, risk my life, you know, fighting every mosquito on the dark continent, or whatever, you know, and eating food you don't even know it was. And you come back and tell a brother. Yeah. Oh, I want to just, 
Let me, let me hug you. <laughs> yeah, hug you, bear. All right. Isn't that, don't, have you ever, you've had it happen, right? Somebody throw water on you? It's just ignore them, people. Just walk away and say, you're just stupid. You're just brutish. Okay. So I like that. Isn't that cool right there? That you wouldn't have noticed that if you wouldn't have read it and studied it. But most people just read past that. No, there's, there's, there's contextual things here. All right. Let's go one more verse, I believe on this chapter and he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ that they asked him to stay there a few days so they wanted to hang out with Peter man Peter was cool now wasn't he he wasn't cool earlier <laughs> no nobody wanted to hang out with Peter um, go to chapter 19 now Acts chapter 19 beginning verse uh, verse 1 I want to preach this whole thing, man. It happened that while Apollos was in Corneth, Paul went through the upper inland districts and came down to Ephesus and found some disciples. And he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed in Jesus as the Christ? And they said, no. We haven't even heard that there's a Holy Spirit. That's sad. A lot of people don't even know that you could be baptized. And he asked them, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism, which was common. They were saved. They were just in John's baptism. That's all they knew. Paul said, John performed a baptism of repentance, continually telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him. That is, to confidently accept and joyfully believe in Jesus, the Messiah and Savior. Easy gospel message, wasn't it? And after hearing this, they were baptized again this time. There's another doctrinal truth. You can be baptized more than once in water. I've been baptized several times in water, and I would do it again. If I were somewhere and I felt the, the need and the, the Spirit of God hit me and we're having a good time, I'd be like, Mark, dunk me. Or whoever's there to could hold me, Curtis, dunk me. You know, whatever. Wouldn't you? But there's people that get real religious. I've already been baptized. I don't need to do it again. Peter's like, wash me all the way, man. And Peter was like, let me swim in this. He didn't care, right? See, people get real religious about religion. And it's like, don't be so rigid. Be free, man. Yeah, Lord, I'll take all of it. Like Peter said, man, I don't want just a little bit. Give it all to me. And the Lord's not going to be like, no, Peter, you already that's enough water. That's enough, dude. <laughs> You've had enough, okay? Enough communion. The Lord's going to be like, here, take it, boy. Right? He has enough. He has enough to give. After hearing this, they were baptized again in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they redid it. Can you do redos? Do a redo. It's not a problem. There are people in the church. I've dealt with this before. You've heard this before, but I'm going to say it again. How, are you ba how do you baptize? I said, well, you know, you're, let's say, you're supposed to baptize in the name of Jesus. I said, yeah, that's true. I said, but I baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in Jesus' name. Yeah. I just added, another, I added all there in case somebody gets offended. Seriously, they'll get, I've had people get, confront me and say, they're not baptized because you didn't use the, you know, the full name or half the name. Or, I'm like, oh, 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 just stop. All right, next. People are weird, man. And, and that's why we have division in our communities. And that person goes to that steeple church, and that person goes to that dome, and, and this is how he believes, and just stop. And when Paul <laughs> laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. What did he do? He just laid his hands on them. And they began speaking in unknown tongues, languages, and what? Prophesying. So they were baptized, and then he laid hands on them. They got baptized in the Holy Ghost as well. Is that right? In unknown languages, again, tongues and prophesying. This, I believe, is your prayer tongue. When it says unknown, it, it's talking about that. It's not known, okay? Everybody who's been baptized in the Holy Spirit has that ability to speak in an unknown language. Okay, what does that mean? And I want to get too deep into it with my time, but unknown language Basically, again, it's not even known to you. 
you really don't understand, but I'm going to show you later if I have, to, I'm not going to have time, but I'm going to show you later in our teachings how that you can understand it, and there's times when God will let you understand it. But basically, it is a language between you and God, okay? If the, whole, the, the devil doesn't even know. He knows the results of it because whatever you just did stirred God up and shooed the devil away. And all of us have done this. Again, you go through a pressurized situation. You, let's just say it's oppression, whatever it is. And, and all of a sudden, you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You go into warfare prayer. And next thing you know, you feel the chains break. Psh, 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 psh. Nothing around you changed. The bill's still laying on the table. Right? The voicemail is still there from the IRS, whoever. But you're 30,000 feet higher than where it was because you prayed in the Holy Ghost. Something you said to God lifted you out of that miry and that muck and that clay and that stuff, didn't it? It's not a state of mind. It's no hooey, hooey, hooey. It's a spiritual experience that comes from the depth of your inner man. And if we learn how to live in that inner man, we wouldn't have so much struggles here. The greatest arena of battle is, is not the front lines of a military conflict. It's right here. If I can learn to control my thoughts, I can learn to control my attitude, it will control my tongue. And the tongue is my rudder of my life. I can tell you where you're going by listening to your words. You can tell what kind of man I am by listening to my words. Because that's my rudder. Where am I headed? If you got a filthy mouth, if you got a rebellious mouth, then your rudder's taking you to destruction. If you got a mouth of praise, you got a mouth of blessing, it's going to take you to that desired place. Now you might have detours in your life, but you'll get there because you have a, you're you're speaking the right things. All right, next verse. I don't want to end this, but I think I'm going to have to in a minute. And they were about 12 men in all. Let me see next, I think. And they went into the synagogue and for three months spoke boldly, reasoning, arguing, persuading them about the kingdom of God. I love that. Who did that? Was that Peter? Was that Peter? Were we talking about Peter? Was that Peter? Yeah, it was Peter, right? So what happened? He got pretty bold, didn't he? He was denying before, wasn't he? But now he wasn't. Okay, uh, man, what does that clock say back there? I got two minutes or no? I got eight minutes? Oh, it's eight o'clock. Rats. <laughs> and Walter's like, what? Oh, man, okay. Uh, all right, we're going to fold this up. I, I, I don't want to break this open. So, okay, when we go back on th uh, part 32, I'm going to take you to some more scripture. We're going to continue uh, diverse t kinds of tongues, and then we'll we'll go into the next one. Oh man, I hope to help you some. Um, I want to encourage you with these words. Pray in the Holy Ghost every chance you can. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, you can be. Uh, it's it's very simple to ask the Lord for that, and we're always open up here at the altar to pray for you. But pray in the Holy Ghost, especially in these last hours, because I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. All I can do is I read. I see what the Bible says. I look outside my window. It's matching. Lord, how do we get through this? You know, how do I have my daily bread? And he'll help you do that, and he'll give you the mysteries and revelation of it. Father, thank you. Teach us again how to live in the spirit, to walk in the inner man and the core of our lives, Father, so that we don't miss out on what you're going to do. And most of all, we have a deeper relationship with you. I believe that, Father. I believe that you desire for us to have more of the new wine and let it fall like rain. Thank you so much, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I love you. Remember to be praying and to be preparing. I'll see you Sunday.